No one seems to be coming. Well, before I forget that, directly after this talk is upstairs the buff, roughly on the same topic, a bit wider. But of course, everything we can discuss also in this talk, which relates to this talk. In principle, for questions for those on Zoom, unmuting works, and Honza promised to have a look also at the chat. And well, I'd like to give now something on OpenAC, OpenMP offloading. And for some parts, I hand over to Thomas and Andrew. But I'd like to start with something more generic. So kind of intro and history, just for the fun of it, and we didn't talk about it for a while. Then something to the implementation, which is also not really new, but a recap of for those who haven't followed and some things which go wrong, and then tons of updates by a lot of people, and then well, the conclusion and probably some discussions if it doesn't come up before. Well, as a very short introduction, OpenMP or OpenAC looks essentially like that. So on the left, if one goes a bit down, there's OMP parallel is probably the oldest command in OpenMP to make thread parallelization. And several years later, it was then extended to get offloading support with OMP target. And somewhere in between before OMP target was really ready, but much later, OpenACC came along, which looks a bit like on the right side with ACC instead of OMP. And well, for the sake of it, I had on the left side the CC++ example, on the right side the Fortran example, but one sees it looks quite similar. Although that parallel, at least by default, if one doesn't offload to the multi-core or to the host itself in a way, but is running on the device. Let's jump also a bit to kind of the history of it. One sees there were quite a lot of releases. I think the first one which uh, GCC supported on the OpenMP side was 2.5. And then always relatively soon there was support on GCC and then 4.5 was seemingly a bit larger. It took a while to get implemented, especially on the Fortran side. And then came five out, and well, the problem with five is no compiler supports it so far. There were some updates, and now also the first features from OpenMP6 is looming. There's usually some release at supercomputing in November, so we will have a glimpse at 6.0, although it's a technical report, so things can change. But in any case, we have the problem that there's a large gap of the full support, which we claim 4.5, and what's currently out, 5.2, and a bit problem is that the specification is huge. I actually have the printer out version. <laughs> it looks like that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I don't know. As, as written there, it's 669 pages, and essentially the same although a bit better in terms of sizes and open ACC side, uh, where we support 2.6, count as 3.2. And that's also a bit of a problem that some compilers are a bit further than us, but I think they are also still quite far away from the 3.2. And the specification is a bit shorter, which is maybe not surprising then since it's a bit more on the offloading side and not having unroll and host parallelization or whatever of OpenMP, but one of the six sites offloading currently works on, as I said, on the right column on NVPTX, GCN. There was some attempt which still exists uh, in terms of support and with simulators it can be used for the Intel MIG. I think it was Knight's Landing. It's very deprecated because not real hardware support, but that's in there, but more could be added. And maybe also to the technical sides, both have some 
or members who discuss about it, some more active, some less. Uh, I think GCC is quite well represented in both of them. And well, I know that I spend quite a lot of time with the OpenMP specification trying to fi fix some bugs or things which are unclear. And well, Thomas is a lot of time spending with OpenACC and also trying if something comes up to fix there. And from my feeling, I had a feeling that uh, the OpenMP, at least from the people in the specification, more are there. But seemingly both have exactly the same number of representatives. And well, the challenge is, of course, now to get all of OpenMP and best also all of, of OpenACC implemented at some point. Um, well, continue with some kind of motivation that's the CPU time on the Oak Ridge National Lab Supercomputer Summit, which was the second fastest last year from, at that point from this number. Now it's only the fourth fastest. And I found quite interesting all these numbers. First is, according to their measurements, a bit more than half of the code is Fortran, which is, well, for numerics, maybe not that surprising, even outside, and the rest is essentially C, C++, although code which uses at least partially C++ dominates much more. Um, then the accelerators, I assume there is also some extent which doesn't use accelerators, so there's very likely code which has no accelerator usage or only very tiny parts. That's at least my feeling from numerics code in general, but for those which has, there's a huge part around two-third CUDA, CUDA Fortran, then around a quarter is OpenACC and OpenMP currently is there, or well, not quite one percent, although my feeling in terms of the industry is that CUDA only uses tend to go a bit further to OpenACC and in general also there's a move further on to OpenMP. So I assume that will grow. And final number, which I find quite interesting, according to their compiler count, 78% of their code on this PowerPC machine was compiled with GCC. So then they have, of course, the vendor compiler and PGI, I assume, mainly especially for OpenACC and CUDA, and then some Clang. Well, Having done some kind of motivation or overview, I just want to give, which is probably known to those, or very well to known to those who are into it, but I quickly want to mention it kind of as a, I don't know, every five year status update, although I haven't worked on that five years ago. Um, the compilation, both OpenAC and OpenMP uh, share a lot of things in common both in the parser and then later on, but there are a couple of cases where they're handled completely different since it's known, but, and libcomp and more. What goes then past and maybe interesting is that that's the difference to LLVM since we in the middle end can still access the, uh, the front end code. We have quite a lot of access for target hooks, which gets interesting. I mean, this example there, there's a first private for one variable used in there and gets interesting as, for instance, Fortran derived type with allocatable components, which in turn again have allocatable components and arrays. So one can map something very complicated there. And in terms of implementation, it might get interesting that come then to come of optimization problem. The parallel offload region and so on split are separate at nested functions. And in terms of optimization, it would be of course nice if we could do some const propagation and so on there, which is a bit missing. And in terms of saving, the, there's a list of the entry function and global variables which is stored in a vect. And of course, all, everything which is marked for offloading is also saved, and that goes into an LTA format in a separate section. And the rest of the code, including the host fallback mode and so on, they are compiled normally with or without LTO. 
and well, that's essentially what I have there, and then the um, and the second step, the driver calls then for every target at link time, and make offload, which involves the LTO for the target, the linker, and then host code is generated with a constructor to register the global variables, entry functions in, in libgomp, and everything is then packaged into the ELF file for or can be NVPTX, GCN, and so on. And there comes the next issue. One I already mentioned is that the const propagation into function and things like that. Target LTO would be nice that we discussed yesterday during the LTO buff bit. And the other problem is since this offload variable is stored separately, the middle end does not really know in the entry procedural analysis that uh, the function are somewhere called or somewhere in some table, so we add false note, but it disables quite a lot of optimization which could be done. And maybe on the comp side, at the startup, it looks for the plugins for the different targets, checks which devices are available, and essentially all device specific parts is in these libcomp plugin, and then of course there are also the associated target libraries are needed and currently the way to specify options for the linking. I copied out from the GCC manual on the top right, so one has to specify explicitly which libraries one also wants to load on the target side or for instance, with the second line example that one needs to have lib atomic for NVPTX and for GFX one needs to specify or the AMD GCN when you specify which GPU one has. And another issue, which implementation detail, but also causes in a way some problems, that's we have single parsing, so everything goes passed into the object file. I said the offload parts gets uh, tagged with an attribute, but otherwise the host fallback is exactly the same. And then only at link time, uh, everything gets then decided where to go, and essentially you can also say at the beginning you have OpenMP without specifying any device, or you specify all devices, and then at link time you can decide, no, I decided differently, I want to have offloading to that device and to that device not, and well, as mentioned currently, there's no LTO on the device side, there can be on the host side. And the single parsing, of course, has a bit problem. I mean, one is good, everything is consistent, but the different difficult problems are, for instance, with C++, if we want to have exception support on the host, but not on the offloading part, we have trouble. We could discuss things there, and it's also a bit difficult, but probably not impossible, as these things like uh, LVM has, they have pass for every device, everything separately, and they have, for instance, some special uh, math function like NV apps for CUDA and FEMA things which make it a bit hard, and also which made it a bit harder in several cases is uh, if one runs meta directive or variants, since one has to drag them all the way around both essentially for the host fallback code and for the uh, device offloading, having some special cases a bit difficult and well, other things, of course, vectorization links, SIMD or SIMD for, L, uh, for NVPTX is a bit a hard part. And maybe the last thing as implementation detail the, on the left is how you can parallelize in terms of the, the language is OpenMP, OpenACC, you have three things. And on the hardware side, I mean, the, 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 the chip is on the top, but then you also have three things, and then you can, of course, either map those things together. So Teams goes to thread block workgroup and so on, and then you end up with SIMD to thread or, or work item, or well, you say a thread uh, in parallel primarily is thread is a thread, and 
ordered like that. And of course, this has implications. And if one looks at other compilers, most of them started having only teams and parallel as parallel items. And that makes, of course, a problem if a program is written like that. And we then kind of want to have use SIMD, and there's no SIMD. So I think Andrew will mention some parts about this because that, of course, hurts the performance if it's not get used. And well, for some details in there and exchange data, there's also now since, I don't know, two weeks or so, it's included in the libcomp uh, documentation, these offload target specifics. So essentially what belongs together is in there. Well, I quickly want to also say what's new in OpenMP. So I kind of try to give some tracking overview. Since a while on the project comp page, you find a table like shown at the bottom. So it shows a feature for an OpenMP version and then shows in which version it is implemented. And I was essentially counting the cells to give kind of these progress bars for OpenMP 5, 5.1 and 5.2. So the gray one is kind of everything they are counted, ignoring things like deprecation. So one sees there's some steady progress and slowed a bit down with five and since others came up. And of course, there are a lot of pending works. For instance, Metal Reactive Declare Mapper, I found also a bit array shaping on contiguous array. And some items there, which are marked as work in progress, are have some patches which needs to be reworked. They are also kind of on our branch, which is the OG, so-called OG12 branch, which you can find the, the full name also on the GC branches list. And well, in total, there are of course more missing, like 10, I count 10 nodes for 5, 20 for 5.1, and then there are of course unrelated things which are not directly required in terms of parsing, but it's nice unified shared memory, a bit more to that a bit later, and then debugging, tracing, and so on is of course also nice, and there are the work in progress things by some students. Yeah. I'd like to just mention that the graphs look nice, but uh, in reality, we start with the simplest features, and and then have very large features at, at the end, or as some of them in. So they are not scaled about the amount of work, but no, just, that, just that was a features. simple counting, but I found it a bit difficult to make kind of screenshots about the version. So I kind of, at least if it goes up, then it goes in the right direction. But I mean, uh, that's, uh, so, so there is progress, but it's of course, there's trivial features like a bit, uh, especially on the right with 5.2, where in some cases, they want to have consistency with clauses names and they kind of said, no, this clause has two meanings. We want to have one meaning. So we changed the name of the clause from to to enter. And then it's of course very easy. You need to pass enter and treat it exactly like two. And then there are of course the hard features like the meta directives, but I mean, it still gives kind of a feeling what, where it's going. But I mean, the, this little progress towards the right with five is that there are several large pa patches which are partially ready or still need to be completed. And I think if all which are half completed and in progress and being revised, then we would also would make a big jump. I mean, we direct of Claire Mapper and things like that. I mean, there is kind of ready. I mean, they exist, they work, um, but they are not fully reviewed, not fully revised, so it's a bit difficult, but I found it a bit more useful giving such a matrix than listing 30 items or so. So I have a question here. Um, do we have any insight into how uh, the, the, the features that we do or do not implement are actually used? So, so uh, are, are we basically chasing the users or are they happily sitting on OpenMP 4.2 feature-wise? I think that's a bit difficult. I mean, that's kind of this hand and egg problem. I think for a long time, a lot of them were, I mean, of the main users were sitting a bit on the 4.5. I mean, 
I'm not sure, sure exactly about that part, but at least from other code, I know groups who kind of want to have support from all compilers of a feature. And then they're happy they, if their favorite compiler supports something, they jump on it. And here I have the feeling it's somewhere in the middle and my feeling is now five has enough things that there's code which uses at least part of it. And yeah. But so it's, it's kind of chicken and egg problem because if there are no implementation of certain feature, then nobody can use it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, sure, we, we could try to guess which features will be more popular in the future and implement them first. So then maybe a related question to you who be on the standards committee. Are OpenMP and also maybe OpenACC features that are developed coming from the theory academia, they do features because, well, that sounds cool, or are they you actual use cases that need to need to have new features? Uh, as m um, my feeling is that that's kind of a bit both. I mean, there are certain things which are, I mean, a bit more looking at the upcoming ones. I mean, there are certain things like what we recently run into that with standard uh, complex reduction are not possible by default because it's a class. So for that one, it would be nice to have it implemented, whereas, I mean, the C99 were a kind of load complex also works. So that comes kind of not a perfect real need, but uh, it's much more convenient than if you have to find your own one and things like that, or you want to have some allocator which allocates on the device and something like that, which comes from application, and then I have the feeling a bit more like what is also bit implemented as unrolling and tiling, which are separate and with all the fine tuning and then applying to some parts which have unrolled some other directives and so on. My feeling that comes a bit more from academia. And I mean, a lot of features are also a bit like fine tuning, some special code for some special hardware you want to have very precise control and it might be that in some cases it's used, but at least my feeling is for the more general scientific application in my thing from some hacker from was also that's really this generic one which you run on your laptop plus on a cluster plus on this computer and that one there you don't tend to you make very specific special cases but you try to get a general one working and then you don't need it but it's kind of difficult to say and of course there's always those which micro optimize for some specific things and just to add the open ACC perspective, that's largely user demand, what, what we're adding there, um, which goes so far that for a lot of things, um, the demand comes into existence during implementation. So a lot of hackathons and things are going on where the vendors are present, so a lot NVIDIA, PGI, <clears throat> and they even often prototype certain things and then make that available to certain users or it's not official open ACC and then later work on standardizing that um, so that's what actually we have been doing a lot in the recent years. This process also explained a bit slower pace of open ACC since there's less in, push for some fancy features. In open MPI I see very often that for instance Intel comes with our customers want us to do yeah. this and this or for instance, C++ 17 added some kind of reductions and so somebody thought it, it would be nice to, to, to make them faster with, with OpenMP uh, in, in a SIMD context and so let's, let's add a feature for that. But for many features the problem is that something is proposed and then some people say uh, let's allow this as well because just we can and, and the problem is that yeah, the, the standard grows way too much now. And uh, we have many clauses and uh, many constructs and, and for the new constructs, all the, well, many, many of the clauses are allowed. Uh, so, so, so the composability, the, the amount of work on, on the compiler side increases even more than, than the size of the spec. Uh, uh. Well, in terms of what's in there for GCC 13, 
decided to leave out the GCC 12. The changes or release notes are quite complete. I just have there that requires is now better supported. Reverse offer in principle is supported, except that's not yet on devices, although I have there a couple of patches, so not much is needed. And then several patches, like also on the slide before, like mappers, meteorex, and so on, memory handling, which we come in a moment, are there as kind of draft patches or first being reviewed and so on. But I hope that most of them get in still into you. Five I mean, for the 5.0 support in GCT 13, but they're not yet readily available there. And 5.1 saw some routine supports, device in device num specific environment, variables, no weight and tasks. And as mentioned, for 5.2, we have a couple of first patches like clause renaming, I mentioned before, and some extension like do across or first private allocate on scope. So a bit more is there, and I'm sure more is coming. And since I was a bit looking at the backporting to our OG12 branch, I counted 127 commits, which I cherry picked from mainline. So that's what changed for OpenMP, OpenACC, NVP, TXGCN, and so. Well, that's roughly the what's new in OpenMP. And now I hand over to OpenACC. Hello, I'm OpenACC. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is a rather short update because um, our customers are currently largely focused on OpenMP, so not so much OpenACC development going on. On the other hand, some has still be going on and um, also always uh, upstreaming or finishing changes that are in our development branch, getting them integrated in a master branch. So the short summary is that all active branches of uh, GCC support OpenACC 2.6. As we've seen earlier, GCC 10 supported that and all the later branches with, of course, bug fixes and sm some small or more or less small, some bigger new features going into the, the later branches and code offloading to AMD GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs, as we've seen. Um, right, and that's again the, the Fortran example that Tobias has shown before. That's just highlighting, um, does the pointer work? Oh, no. oh, here. Oh, yeah. uh, that's the OpenACC parallel construct that's uh, in, uh, well, roughly, briefly in a way, a thing of getting this region of code onto the GPU and also spawning some parallel, parallel, parallelism here with the OpenACC several uh, levels of parallelism. Um, not not uh, a fully redundant, fully parallel execution. There is some, there's an execution model which mandates how, how certain loops transition from, for example, uh, worker single to worker parallel mode and all that, but I'm not going into the details here. Just that you have seen this, this is a combined parallel loop construct, so parallel gets the code onto the GPU and also here deals with the data movement, getting the AB arrays onto the GPU and the C array created on the GPU and at the end of the region copied back to the host. And the loop construct describes that certain loops, do loops here in Fortran, or collapse to loop iterations here, um, uh, and describes that these are independent data, there's no data dependencies, so they may all be executed in, uh, in parallel concurrently. And then we have an inner loop here with a reduction clause that's all very similar to OpenMP. And I guess, yeah, you understand what this is doing here. Um, right. Typically, the compiler would assign a vector parallelism to the inner loop here, and the outer loop would get uh, gang parallelism, worker parallelism, probably. Question? No. Um, okay, yeah, so that's the parallel construct where the, the developers um, tells the inst uh, uh, tells the implementation in combination with the loop independent that the loops are 
um, have don't have data dependencies. Um, the other thing that's used a lot in OpenACC is the kernels construct, where the compiler figures out whether it may parallelize loops or has to rewrite them in a way to make them uh, dependence-free or uh, cannot parallelize them, for example. So that's work. Um, ah, okay, I will cover that later, but keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, yeah, so first, uh, some more general things. What we have done is uh, at OpenACC worker parallelism for AMD GPUs that had not existed before. That has a new uh, middle-end implementation in GCC where the NVPTX backend did support worker parallelism already for several years, but it's implemented in the GCC NVPTX backend. Um, uh, actually, it's quite some code what was now copied into a GCC middle end pass, so eventually we should see about either sharing that code in, instead of duplicating or also switching NVPTX to the middle end transform if that makes sense that Tom is nodding his head. He's the maintainer of the GCC NVP to export. <laughs> yeah, well, but that's work to be done. Um, we've done bug fixing uh, that went uh, in, into GCC 12. Um, like I'm saying here, data privatization sharing at the certain levels of parallelism. So, for example, the uh, the sum variable here. Um, is this at the, the worker level typically when the compiler decides that it applies gang and worker parallelism to these outer loops here and that means that all the vectors that execute as part as of one worker here, they all see the same variable. So that means effectively that this variable is put into a certain memory region on the GPU that then all workers um, access instead of being threat private, for example. And I have to say that's actually not yet implemented, but the example works anyway because the reduction operation fixes that up in a way. I realized that when yesterday looking at this example and I wondered, does this actually work? But yeah, it does, but not the way I guess the OpenACC uh, people wanted this to be implemented. So. That's something you realize after years. You have implemented something, it works, but it's not the ideal way of doing it. The GPU hardware actually has a better way. What's currently being done is broadcasting well, from one, from thread zero, all the values to all the other threads, and then later, or in, with the reduction, you then combine all the values. But it can be done simpler in this case, I guess, if, I, if I'm not totally confused now. Anyway. <laughs> We, at, we, we did solve this at the gang level, so that's working um, now for both um, GCN offloading and uh, PTX. We did a lot of Fortran work with all the interesting data types and, and uh, um, options that Fortran has for variables and data types. And OpenACC has um, a mode where you can asynchronously launch computations in, on several streams, which execute parallel in parallel on one or several devices, um, there were some issues there. So that's yeah, just bug fixing. We've done also some general optimization work um, and new diagnostic to warn about, like I say here, potentially suboptimal choices of parallelism. That's the reason why this is not enabled by default because it's too noisy uh, in my understanding because it wants about too many things. Right, and that's yeah, now back to the kernel's work where the compiler is to figure out whether certain loops should be parallelized or not. Uh, you have seen that slide, almost that slide last year when Frederick over there <laughs> worked on that uh, and did a presentation at last year's GNU Tools track at the Linux Plumbers conference. I'm just referencing this again because we have continued uh, upstreaming, well, yeah. uh, for, for the earlier phase one work, bug fixing is also some kind of upstreaming. Frederick's actual work for using graphite to do the analysis and all the related things mentioned here, um, that is not yet in GCC master branch, um, but it, it is now in our public development branch, the OG11 and later OG12 branch. Um, 
and the idea is still to get it into master branch. He posted the patches, but they need to be reviewed. And yeah, I'm also guilty of not following up with that, but uh, management had different ideas what I should be working on. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, the work is out there if you want to experiment with that using graphite to do the open ACC kernels work that's that's available in public at least right and also what what we're continuously trying to do is generally upstreaming our stuff from the development branch into master branch which also always takes time and needs some revisions occasionally um, next steps would be Again, more revision upstreaming, completing features that are still missing in OpenACC 2.6. So we are not implementing all of OpenACC 2.6, but in a way, uh, stuff that's useful. That was a question from Richie earlier. Um, so we actually, in, in, in uh, cooperation with our customers, uh, settled on, uh, well, I, I guess it's 80% of OpenACC 2.6, roughly, that we implemented um, and the missing pieces should actually be reasonably simple in, in a lot of cases. So I earlier this year listed them as uh, potential Google of some of code projects. So it's basically things like you have runtime library calls to allocate memory on the device or to initialize devices and the same thing can be done using directives like we had this ACC parallel directive. So there is an ACC init directive to initialize a device. So that's largely just implementing parsing in the front end and then routing that to the same, same uh, runtime library function where the runtime library call goes. So should be good projects for beginners. Um, and also I had some ideas to use the GCC static analyzer on OpenACC code because you have the distinction between uh, host and device memory spaces. And it's easy to mix them up because both are void pointers. But the analyzer could actually figure out whether you're dealing with the correct kind of thing and not well, and the very same problems as everywhere uh, use after free, double free, these kind of things all exist. We had buggy test cases that I figured out the hard way <laughs> uh, when changing something in the runtime library and then you get segmentation faults and later find, okay, this is actually an invalid test case which could easily have been detected by static analysis. So that's some ideas there. Nobody applied this year for that, but try again next year. Um, and then, of course, implement new features, OpenACC 2.7 and later. I'm listing here a few features. I'm not reading them out, and that's just a very abbreviated list. And But as I have said, OpenACC has largely focused in the last years on, well, introduce some new features, but then a lot of clarification between the several uh, vendors or implementations of OpenACC. And, generally making sure that the specification is understandable both for users and for implementers. Um, and yeah, I actually helped a lot doing that in, in the OpenACC committee, Tobias also occasionally. Right, that's all I had here. Now it's Andrew's turn. Yeah, and I maybe give a tiny bit of motivation why Andrew <laughs> comes to the stage, I mean, unified memory, shared memory is of course quite nice. I mean, it saves all the work of mapping. And it also works very nice with large data set, which doesn't fit on the GPU, but the question is how to get it fast. And then comes a bit memory management there. I mean, for small data, mapping helps. And for large data, it helps, for instance, to pin the memory which is hot somehow, so that's one part of memory management, but also for large data, of course, on the large NUMA system, it's also good to have it in the right place. That would be also something on memory management. For the device side, I put some motivation on the top right on the next slide, but, um, well, the rest, the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Tobias. If we'd paralyzed this um, talk, we'd have been finished by now. <laughs> if we'd have offloaded it, you'd have read one slide each. Right. <laughs> so, we've been working on the memory allocators. Uh, when I say we, I need to include Jakob in this because he's been working on it too. But uh, he didn't. The, so the uh, 
uh, all, basic support for the allocators was, uh, allocators was already done, uh, and you've done the lib mem kind, which is good for the host stuff, because nobody's asking us to do that. Um, but we've been working, we at Siemens have been working on the um, offload memory stuff, uh, the low latency memory, so that's the tiny memories that are on each compute unit in the GPU, uh, it's like usually about 32 or 64K uh, of, of, of really low latency memory. You can allocate that using malloc now, uh, or I should say open, um, OMP alloc. Uh, this works on NVPTX and it will, and the, we will be working on the GCN implementation shortly. Uh, we're also doing pinned memory, which is of course a host thing, but, um, but it's interesting for copying the memory back and forth to the device uh, without page misses. So um, that's been done. Uh, when I say done, the, the, the OG12 branch, the development branch, these, this stuff has all been submitted to upstream for review and it's been put on the development branch so people can try it and use it, um, but uh, is um, not yet in mainline. Uh, the unified shared memory is working for both AMD and NVPTX, uh, and more about that in a minute. Allocator clauses and directives, it's one bullet point, but actually it took quite a lot of work to get that going. So as Abby's been working on that, and Quark's been working on that, and Chang Lin's been working on that, it's, um, uh, it's, it's you, you just put a magic pragma before your variable and then say, this variable needs to exist in this memory space, and magically, the compiler is supposed to do a malloc behind the scenes and, a, and make a free appear from nowhere, and it's all been quite involved with. We've been working, and got that working, I believe. Uh, uh, yes, not all have been, most have not yet been accepted, but some, is, some of this is in already. Hopefully, we'll get most of this into GC13, uh, and if whatever doesn't will be in the next one. Uh, yes, the pin memory. Uh, implementation that we have is not yet on mainline, but then that has been. Uh, it's using the M lock, which works for works on any Linux system. It makes sure that there's no page misses. But if you are running on a system which wasn't running out of memory, you see no performance boost whatsoever. Um, but maybe it ma matters for some people. So, but we are planning to do a CUDA specific. Uh, implementation of this, so if you have NVIDIA cards on your system, it'll use the CUDA malloc host uh, API to get your pinned memory, and that's better because the, um, the CUDA drivers themselves know that that's pinned, they, 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 they trust that it's pinned, and you actually get a speed up on any system regardless of whether you're overloaded or not. So we're going to do that soon. Uh, then unified shared memory is a magic thing, which is not a lot of pages in this, and then somehow it turns out that they just expect everything else to do something different uh, when in the, in the presence of USM. But basically it's a magic memory mode in which the, the devices and the, and the host system, even though they don't share the same memory, they don't, they're not, it's not a shared memory system, they're supposed to pretend like it is. And this thing's supposed to just work with no map clauses and no, um, and the user's not supposed to have to do anything and suddenly it's supposed to be faster and everything. Uh, turns out that that's hard. <laughs> but um, so we have implemented a mode in which every single call to malloc, calloc, new, free, all of that sort of stuff is intercepted by the compiler and, re and re re redirected to the libgomp uh, OMP alloc function, um, and that puts it in the in in the in the uh, correct memory space or the memory mode, so that the magic page um, migration system can work in the drivers. Uh, and uh, that's so. In theory, this means that all memory that was heap memory is now uh, shared between the device and the host and will magically migrate on demand just whenever you use it. Uh, libg4tran lib has also um, been ported to use this, so any, any allocations inside libg4tran will also magically use USM when, it's at, when the mode is active. 
Uh, other third-party libraries will not work. You have to be care very careful with that. And stack and static data is not suitable for this. Um, you could try and implement it for the stack, but you would probably end up with your memory thrashing backwards and forwards really horribly. You don't do it. Um, the, um, yeah, so this is implemented on MVPTX using the, using the CUDA malloc managed API. Uh, so the CUDA driver is responsible for making sure that the memory is on either the host or the device at any given moment. AMD have a very similar implementation. They uh, have different names for it and different APIs. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and, but that's working also. Uh, it needs a little bit of fine tuning for performance. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to be working on that soon. But um, right now, what's on the OG12 development branch, it works. You can do it. Um, and AMD actually have an e extra ability over the CUDA. If you, I mean, the CUDA, if you haven't allocated the memory using the proper API, it's just not accessible. That's a, it's a segmentation fault. With AMD, uh, the way that it works is that the, the GPU can actually say, well, this isn't one of my addresses. It's not one of the managed addresses. But I can still poke through the PCI and get it really slowly. Um, so you got a question? No, I just want to remark that in principle NVPTX or some NVIDIA cards starting from Pascal, but not all of them with some patch to Linux kernel, which I think is in, also support this. But I think you need some of them and with the kernel, whatever support. And I think many cards don't have that. Yeah. So, but in principle, it also exists for some NVIDIA cards yeah. of the newer kind. Oh, good. that reminds me, going back to the pin memory, the current system requires that you have permission to use pin memory, locked memory, uh, but in the future when the CUDA one will just work, yes. Have you guys seen Tidal Scale? Tidal Scale. So Tidal Scale, what it does is it uses um, the support for hypervisors to basically do um, one big memory across any number of nodes. And then if you, it does locality and does some AI down the bottom. But basically, if you have a page miss, it could actually import a page from another node. So you end up with this huge memory over, over, over a cluster. OK, well, don't tell the OpenMP people. They might want it. And they'll want it with one single pragma, which just works. <laughs> <laughs> they probably want to have 50 existing pragmas. In fact, they, it'll be. It'll be like it'll be universal unified shared memory, and it'll fetch pages from Mars. Don't don't tell them. <laughs> right now it's proprietary, so they may not be interested. But uh, uh, if anybody's interested, I'm the CTO. I, can uh, I think SGI Altrex had something similar, where they had these 1,024 threads possible with. Numa architecture, so kind of common memory, but some faster and some slower. And I think things like libmem kind also then make sense there. Well, locality is a big issue, right? So yeah. Mm. Anyway, all of these features are working on the OG12 development branch, uh, and they will be gradually, um, uh, gradually merged into the GCC13 as and when uh, Jakob stops rejecting the patches. <laughs> he's not looking. He's not. He's not looking hopeful. <laughs> okay, moving on to the uh, GCN stuff. Uh, so, in GCC 12, so this is, you know, updates since this time last year. So in the GCC 12, we had uh, improved debug information. Um, this, so this was, uh, this is for the Rock GDB that we've heard so much about this um, th th this cauldron. Uh, and we also added TI mode support. Uh, this is, um, uh, was mostly needed because there's some weird things going in LibGomp with um, packed integers and stuff. And so we've had to, had to get, make that work. And we've improved the uh, GPU parallelism as, um, uh, as Thomas was saying with the OpenACC stuff. Uh, then since 12, in the, we've um, added support for the new AMD Instinct GFX 90A machines, the MI200s, uh, the graphics cards. So these are the CDNA2 graphics cards. I say graphics cards, they're not graphics. So general purpose GPUs. 
Uh, we've added this unified shared memory uh, support into AMD. We have and uh, uh, and have got SIMD routines working. So they previously, if it encountered a function call in a in the inner loop of whatever, it would just give up and say, I can't, can't SIMD that. Uh, so now we can call um, the, the functions properly. That required having a, changing the API to make it so that we could pass vectors around efficiently. Um, AB, ABI, not API. And, uh, and, that I, and I also discovered that even though GCC has had a has the ability to generate the in-branch clones for about nine years, it wasn't using them anywhere that I could detect. So I've so, uh, pr submitted a patch to um, actually make that work, and that should actually work on, I think, ARM and Intel as well. Uh, there's, some, there's a review done for that. Thank you, I need to work, work, on, a, on, work on the in internal representation a little. Uh, and then the SIMD math routines, so, same again, the goal is to vectorize as much as possible um, because obviously it's a GPU, if you're not vectorizing it, it's slow. And, every, uh, and at the present, every time you call like cosine or uh, you know, floor even, it was just saying, well, I can't vectorize that. So we've been going through the, uh, the libm, trying to pull out every function in there and make, it, make a vector function for it. So far, the single precision um, uh, routines that are supported by native instructions have been implemented and that's been pushed into GCC 13. Um, but there aren't much in the way of double precision uh, for native. That's going to have to remain a function call, so we're going to have vector right vector calls for those. I think, I'm not sure how Quark's going to implement it, but I believe that they're going to have to live in the GCC, otherwise they won't be generally available at link time. I don't think we can push that into into new uh, into new lib in a sensible way. There's no glibc on the GPU. Yeah, I know. But uh, on the glibc side, those are lib in lib mvec, so it would make sense to have those in new lib instead of in lib gcc. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where was I at? Oh yes, auto simd. So. The way that we've modeled SIMD, uh, the, 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 VEC, the SIMD loops in OpenMP for, in GCC is that uh, if you, when you say OMP distribute, you get, you get um, uh, a, a team. When you say OMP parallel, you get, what, you get um, thread parallelization. But in order to use the SIMD at all, you have to use the SIMD uh, directive or the SIMD clause. And this is different to the way that it's done in LLVM and perhaps other compilers. Uh, they, so where we have 16 threads with 64 vector lanes each, they have 1,024 frame, um, 1,024 threads of one lane each. Um, and, you know, it all ends up being SIMD under the hood, but the pro pro problem is that the people are writing people are writing programs for one compiler, then moving it across the GCC and discovering that it's really slow. And it's like, well, insert the word SIMD here and it gets super fast. Uh, so what we're doing is we're trying to make it so that it automatically adds the SIMD thing where it's possible. And it's, it's kind of, that's kind of the way you think about it, it's not the way it's actually being implemented, but we're trying to make it so that the SIMD thing just happens so that code is portable. Um, there's at least one benchmark that, I, that we found that has this problem. Um, so is there any validity issue with adding SIMD into uh, a loop that's already having the parallel or whatever clause? It's not greatly different to just saying F3 vectorize um, and just having, you know, just have auto, the auto vectorizer run anyway. There, there's, there's a little bit of, a little bit of difference that you need. Uh, 
the explicit SIMD construct in OpenMP has several uh, several tasks uh, which it can do and uh, several things that user declares that way. Uh, some of them are some restrictions what you can and can do in the body. And so obviously uh, you, you can't uh, out, add automatically a SIMD uh, directive into something which, which wasn't there unless you verify that none of the restrictions are, uh, are not, not held. Uh, another thing is that for, uh, for our implementation, SIMD, at least, um, yeah, uh, for NEPTX, we use SIMTS as a different module, but for others, we, we use the vectorizer, but we actually do three, three main things. One of them is handle the clauses on the SIMD constructs, stuff like reductions, and we do that with, with the magic ugly arrays. Uh, and then we set the safe LAN flag on, on the loop, which basically says how many, uh, how many iterations can, can be run well, almost concurrently. It's, it's not that they are completely independent, but there are no forward uh, uh, dependencies, and and the last flag is 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 the flag that tells the vectorizer we really want to uh, uh, vectorize this loop even if if it's not on by default, and so the question is what from these we can and should do uh, by default either when the user asks with a special option or or just do it by default because we think it's is the thing uh, the users want. And for, for some of the OpenMB constructs, uh, the spec is clear that there, are, there can't be any, any inter-iteration uh, dependencies anyway. So like if we have a distribute construct and there is no disk schedule, uh, then the implementation can choose any kind of scheduling. And in that case, they are independent. And so we can set, set the safe land to int max and, and that's it. For the first, uh, first loop uh, vectorization, I would say that because at O2 we vectorize now by default, then it makes no sense to ever set it for, because that would be just for O0, O1, o, OG and OS, uh, and we probably don't want to do it. Yeah, it, it, well, the, the flag is just tr try to vectorize this anyway when, when it's not enabled by default. But I think the safe one is, is the more important flag, and, but we, we can only set it for some of the constructs with some clauses or lack thereof. Yeah, that was, we definitely encountered some issues with the implementation of this. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think we still have one slide for you, Thomas, so uh, unless you want to finish something here. Yeah. So, and the other thing I was doing is adding multiple vector sizes because 64 lane vectors are too big for most things and in particular SLP doesn't, won't, won't use anything that doesn't fit precisely, won't, won't do masking. So, uh, yeah. that was, so I'm trying to work on that at the moment. Yeah, and over to Thomas to quickly finish the last slide, except the from conclusion which we leave out. Quick update on the NVPT export. Again, Tom is the maintainer and uh, Roger Seil also did a lot of work implementing support for new instructions that were not yet supported with the higher SM level, which in a way corresponds to newer hardware architectures. Remember that we're targeting the PTX intermediate language and not directly targeting a GPU architecture because that's not the way the NVIDIA uh, stack works. You can't even do that. Uh, PTX on the other end is published by them um, and is the intermediate language there. Um, Tom did a lot of bug fixes for PTX conformance so that stuff doesn't break <laughs> when using your GPU hardware, which were the just-in-time compiler tries to optimize more, and we were uh, violating some invariants in there. Um, that's it, basically. And Tom apparently just approved the patch that I had sent that you can default GCC not with a configure time flag to to a higher um, SM level. 
pet review at the cauldron, talking at the bar when arriving here, and now we've got it approved. <laughs> okay, that's that. Well, I mean, essentially, only was saying that a lot of things is, still has to be done. We made quite a lot of progress, and well, question and answer, I think we defer to the buff, unless there's something urgent. And otherwise, the buff is upstairs, and in this room, there are security improvements in the GNU tool chain. Yeah. And well, if there are questions from those who are joining in Zoom, they should probably also go to the buff and ask questions there. But I do not see anything on the chat.